Now, it is the seventh straight day of the Russian invasion by the Russians into Ukraine. The residents of Kiev are bracing for further airstrikes as the city is holding its defenses despite a 40-kilometer-long convoy of Russian troops who are presently camping on the outskirts of the city. Now, Russia on Tuesday stepped up its military offensive. At least five people are said to have been killed just in the strikes on Tuesday after the Russian jets reportedly struck a television tower. The Russian military had warned the residents of Kiev to leave from the city, saying that it would be carrying out missile strikes against facilities in Kiev. An American official has said that the mile-long armored column bearing down on the capital city of Kiev had not made any advance in the last 24 hours, and it is reportedly frozen in its place due to logistical problems of a shortage of food and fuel and also perhaps to reassess the tactics that the Russians want to employ. And also the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that Russia must stop bombing the Ukrainian cities before any meaningful talks on a ceasefire could start. The first round of negotiations, remember, earlier this week had yielded no breakthrough and a second round is now scheduled to take place later in the day today. Ми про діалог. Я вважаю, так, треба а, припинити хоча б бомбардування людей. Просто бомбардування припинити і після цього сісти за стіл перемог. Партнери, якщо вони не готові брати Україну в НАТО, і якщо вони не готові брати Україну в НАТО через те, що Росія не хоче, щоб Україна була в НАТО, то є гарантії безпеки, напрацьовані спільні для України. The fears continued to grow that Russia could mount an all-out assault in the capital city of Kiev, a city of about a little under three million. Inside Kiev, makeshift barricades dotted the streets and the residents queued outside of a few shops that are still open to purchase some essentials. The Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs shared a video of a destroyed residential block in a town located just 50 kilometers from Kiev. All right, now to get us more insights in terms of what is in fact unfolding in this Russian invasion of Ukraine, we are joined by retired Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Grant, who's joining us live from Kiev. He's, of course, an expert on Baltic security as well. Uh, Colonel, thank you very much indeed for taking time out and speaking to us. And let me begin by asking you this. It is the seventh straight day of the Russian invasion. At this point of time, according to experts who are speaking about the tactics that have been employed by the Russians, they say that the progress Russia seems to be making has actually slowed down due to a stout resistance by the Ukrainian army. You know, how long do you think the Ukrainians can in fact hold out against the Russians? <clears throat> Certainly they can hold out a lot longer than, they, uh, than, than just seven days. Um, they, they, I heard previously on the on the speak about about different areas. Well, in Kiev, they basically they've been held and stopped outside of Kiev, uh, the armored the armored vehicles, mainly because they can't get off the road. And if they do get off the road, they've got to go into forests or difficult areas, and they don't have the um, they don't have the command and control or the tactical ability to go fighting in in in, in difficult terrain. Um, so they're just stuck there, and there's this 40-kilometer column, which may actually not be quite that long, but it's it's stuck on the outskirts on the road, and all that's happened is that the front vehicles have been basically been destroyed, uh, and now it's just not going anywhere. Um, the, the inside of Kiev, th there are so many uh, men with rifles and Molotov cocktails waiting to uh, to attack anything that comes into Kiev. That it, it, I'm afraid it will be a bloodbath. Uh, for Russia, if if they do actually get into the center of Kiev, it, 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 it's not somewhere they need to go or want to go. Right. Um, quite rightly, Ukraine has held Kiev as a strong point, and uh, and and it's holding well and will continue to hold. It doesn't look as though it's going to run out of anything in a hurry, um, because it's still open from the south, so it can still be resupplied with food, uh, fuel, w whatever. You're right to say down south. That, that, that this is where they're making the most progress. But but when you look at the map, it, it looks like this big red spread of 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 uh, <clears throat> Russia. But it's not a big red spread. It's lots of little red dots. Mm -hmm. So there are small areas where they've moved forward. 
Um, and, and they have moved forward because Ukraine has not defended this area as much because it's so large. So this is going to be, you might say, phase two to go back and take it later. What they have done is defended Odessa and they've defended Odessa very well, Odessa and Nikolaev, the mm -hmm. two ports there. And they've defended those extremely strongly. So there's nothing happening there. You know, for people who are looking in terms of how the Russians have been advancing, do you think Russia would risk street fighting in a city like Kiev? Because that would create, you know, a loss of human life that, that perhaps cannot even be imagined at this point of time. Or do you think the Russians would be hoping in, in some ways to lay siege and to try starve off the people who are defending the city of their resources? Is that a strategy that Russia would be looking at or rather than directly storming it? It, it's not clear what strategy they've got at all, because everything that they're doing is so um, so poor in tactical and operational terms. I mean, as, if I'd have been a captain, when I was a captain, if I'd have produced those answers on my staff course, I'd have been thrown off the staff course for stupidity. Uh, so I, it, they, they, they may be standing around the outside, but they're not standing around the outside blocking Kiev. Mm -hmm. They're just standing around the outside to one side of Kiev. Um, and 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 they're not having any success getting through. In fact, the, key, the 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 soldiers keep pushing back and actually pushing pushing the, the the those troops further away. If they come into Kiev, they're going to lose badly right. because the soldiers are just not the quality. I mean, the conscripts especially. I mean, conscripts is it's just children, um, and it's criminal that Russia has actually used them uh, to to go to war. They never should. I think it's actually illegal in Russia, but but. But, you know, it will be criminal. They would lose against effectively what are professional soldiers, some of whom fought in Afghanistan and, and also in the first rounds of the war against Russia. So they're quite skilled and experienced. And also looking at how Russia has carried out with its missile strikes, on the very first day of the invasion, we got reports that Russia is systematically going about dismantling the critical infrastructure in Ukraine so as to prevent the Ukrainians from having a capacity to in fact defend themselves. How successful do you think the Russians have been in dismantling Ukraine's military infrastructure? Uh, it depends what you what you talk about in military infrastructure. I mean, in if, terms if of air talking, bases, in terms of the air defense system that Ukraine has, in terms half, of half, uh, preventing half, Russia half. from getting air superiority. Yeah, half and half. I mean, they they they, they haven't actually destroyed much. And then if you look at the um, the number of missile strikes on the first day, and and then yesterday, it's dropped dramatically. I mean, the the cruise missiles have dropped from something like thirty three, thirty four on the first day to two or three yesterday. Um, so so this means that means that they are running out of cruise missiles. Mm -hmm. Um, which are the ones for accuracy. And what they're using is what you call iron bombs, iron missiles, who you just throw at, 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 a, at a city. And it just causes massive destruction of flats and buildings and whatever when they land. And this is what you're seeing at the moment. This is almost like punishment. It's not, it's not military because it's not actually doing anything military. It's just killing civilians and children. Um, so right. you could say we're in the punishment phase rather than in the military phase at the moment. Right now, people who are looking up in terms of how Russia has gone about specifically targeting certain cities, they, they say that Russia would want to create a corridor between the Donbas region to the Crimean Peninsula. Is that something that you think in terms of how the Russians have been move, moving and maneuvering their resources? Is that what they're trying to do, create a corridor to connect Donbas with Crimea? Yes, of course. I mean, this is this is important for them for, for, for logistic reasons and also for their great what they used to call Nova Russia to try and actually increase the size of the um, uh, increase the size of the two what what most people call separatist areas. Um, and, and but but they're not having any success on in the Donbass. So mm -hmm. the, the, what was the front line that that's holding quite quite well. And in fact, Actually, in one area, the Ukrainians have started to counterattack. You could say behind them, they're coming out of Crimea and gradually moving forward. But they're not moving forward very quickly because logistically, when they go too far, it means that the, 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 the fuel supply is, is, becomes really, really tenuous because this is a big country. Right. And, and this is why I say they're not in everywhere. They're in pockets. Um, and there are huge areas in between those pockets that are still 
controlled by well controlled that that it's still Ukrainian without seeing any Russian Russians at all. Now, look looking at the progress that the Russians have made. It is the seventh day of fighting. Sometimes wars can drag on, depending on you know what the realities are on the ground. But on the very first day, there were reports of Russian armor, you know, arriving at the gates of Kiev, and we are still pretty much in exactly the same spot. Do you think Russia is getting bogged down because it was underestimating how Ukraine could defend itself? Uh, it is completely bogged down uh, in, in around Kiev. Uh, it's also it's been struggling around Kharkiv, and it's also been struggling around Sumy, which is north of Kharkiv. Um, and they they have been moving forward in some places to try and come at the, the south of Kiev, but but they've not actually gone very very far because each time they move forward they get blocked by Ukrainian Ukrainian forces. So the defence has actually been pretty masterful, um, and has been much that the Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian army is proving to be much much higher quality than the Russian army. And also, how soon do you think Russia would be willing to actually sit down and seriously talk of peace? Because this war cannot go on forever. Russia is also hurting because of the financial sanctions that have been imposed on it. The Russian economy is not in the pink of its health. How long do you think Russia can hold out with this invasion? I think this is this is more a political than a military question, and it, and it's to do with how long uh, Russia will stand having Putin in charge of it. Uh, wasting the country's resources, uh, and I, I, already there have been cracks showing it. Well, cracks showing in the military, uh, and that some military are actually refusing to to fight. Um, that hasn't reached uh, plague level yet. It's still only a, 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 a parts of the forces, but it is starting. But in the political side, we've actually seen that some some members of the of the military say that they're not happy. Uh, and and some of the oligarchs have actually said that they're not happy with what's going on. So I right. think if they just keep losing, then at some stage in the next three, four, five days, um, people are going to start saying this is this is stupid, and we need we need to stop. And at that point, Putin's got a big decision to make: does he keep going and lose his home base, mm -hmm. or or what? I'm not sure. All right. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Grant, thank you very much indeed for taking time out and speaking to us and also sharing with us these insights in terms of how the Russian military strategy seems to be finding it way too hard, at least harder than what it earlier had expected this invasion would be. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.